Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Airspeed Reads Naruto video. This one's going to be for volume 47 of the manga. Um, and uh, yeah, this one is called The Seal Destroyed. Uh, the cover, very, very interesting one in that, you know, it kind of highlights some of the bigger moments in this volume Naruto. Obviously going Nine Tails, plus uh, his meeting with his father Minato, the fourth Okage and just the idea that the fight eventually gets to this stage. Um, as I said, I still would have liked one of these volumes to have Sage Mode Naruto on the cover, but, you know, the some of these other moments are pretty big and impactful with regards to the series. Um, but that, as I said, is more of an issue, I think, with the last volume's cover rather than this one. This one it feels quite fitting, um, having this on the cover. So yeah, we cover another 10 chapters, um, this time around 433 to 442. We cover Sage Jutsu, a mistake, uh, Naruto vs. Tendo, uh, Banshoten in Universal Pole, Peace, Confessions, The Seal Destroyed, Catastrophic Planetary Construction, The, con the Conversation with Lord Forth, Rosen Shuriken vs. Almighty Push, and The Final Gamble. So, really interesting stuff. Overall, really, really good volume here in that it's it's got a really good mix of fighting, big moments, emotional moments, uh, big reveals, and uh, building, I suppose, towards the end of this arc. So I I think this is a really excellent volume that covers a lot of things. Um, the use of Hinata in this volume to add extra emotion to things, uh, the reveal Finally, Naruto getting to reveal that um, the fourth Hokage is his father. That was really impactful. And then how the fight goes is uh, really intense with Naruto kind of making a big comeback, then getting beaten down, then making the comeback again, and so on. It, it, it really has a nice kind of flow. And it's one of the first kind of times where I've kind of been like with the manga. It would have been incredible to be part of the Naruto fandom at the time when these chapters were kind of coming out weekly. That um, Hinata I love you moment, the um, the reveal of to Naruto of Minato being his father, and what happened there, plus the fight coming to an end, all super impactful moments that uh, would have been great to see, um, kind of as the story is progressing. But let's get into this. So straight away we start off with the reveal of how Naruto is getting around the Sage Mode limitation, and it's really clever. He has two shadow clones back at Mount Miyaboku, uh, gathering nature energy, and he basically just gets one of the Toad Sages with him to summon one of those clones to the battlefield. He pops it, and via obviously the learning and kind of um, kind of knowledge method of shadow clones, once it pops, it goes into the original Naruto, and he has Sage Mode again. So he has two of those, so he can use Sage Mode for like a combined 15 minutes if he needs to really clever and then the fight is really interesting in that like it, we get the idea that okay Naruto finally has an idea about how all the pains are working and the key ones to take out Tendo pain is like the focus the most powerful one and um, with a push and pull but there's also the one that can revive all of the other ones and he needs to take that one out and uh, we get some really kind of clever moves and like he, he throws the shadow cl he, sh he throws a Ross and Shuriken it's actually a kind of um, like a it's like a double decoy, that one pops, Naruto's actually in the sky and just smashes down with some sage art Rasengan's barrage and takes that one out. Um, and it, it's, it's really clever and then they set up as, as we kind of cut away to the, the reaction to the battlefield. Uh, Hinata kind of reacting, finding out that Naruto's fighting on his own and seeing how much she's kind of worried about him um, as the fight kind of continues. Um, but basically, we get down to, like, effectively, just Tendo Pain versus Naruto. But his uh, his push and pull powers are back after destroying Konoha, and he basically instantly blows away, um, like, uh, Gamabunta and stuff like that. So they're out of the battle. So it's primarily just the two Elder Sage Toads and Naruto versus uh, Tendo Pain as we kind of continue with the fight. They're, I think they're, they're actually at this point is still another one left. And the, the next trick that we get is that um, one of the pains, the one that have kind of can absorb power into it, grabs him and basically sucks all of the sage jutsu out. But Naruto uses the fact that he's stationary and still 
to gather nature energy and basically because this pain is soaking it in he undergoes a uh, toe transformation and turns to stone and that's how one of them is taken out and it's just an interesting thing that pain has been shown to be so powerful and kind of knowledgeable about all of this that it's a shock to him to reveal that oh like being a sage there's a risk to using um, nature energy and sage jutsu that this can happen it, it's just an interesting that he notes that in the middle of the of the fight but as the Ma and Pa sage basically prepare to use Genjutsu to give Naruto a window to attack Tendo Pain, he basically takes out Pa. And it's um it's a pretty powerful moment as just Pain starts to come back and deal heavy damage to a lot of our kind of hero characters. So it seems like um Lord Fus Fu <laughs> Fukuzaku is kind of killed at this point in time, um as um the investigation continues elsewhere into okay we now know that pain has some sort of a transmitter person somewhere that's transmitting uh, chakra to the bodies of pain the six paths um, and they're kind of trying to figure out and the conclusion that they come to is that, that it has to be somewhere really high up um, because it's going to be similar to the situation that pain has in um, in the land of rain so he, he the way he works that um, but after this, basically Naruto is kind of uh, captured. He get he's you know thrown to the ground. Has the um, oh my god, what is it even called? The the kind of black rods. Like I, I completely forget what they are. But the, the, those he has those kind of placed through his kind of limbs and stuff like that. So he's really stuck into the ground at this point in time, and um, it kind of starts to come out. This is where we get I think one of the more interesting aspects of the chapter. Of, the, of this volume actually and it's probably the one that's the most discussion heavy why Payne is doing this and kind of his reasoning what his kind of goals are what his character is and I think it's really important to get this across in that like he's he's a really interesting character the connection to Jiraiya like who is he Nagato um, and so on uh, that, that connection to the past but uh, and he's got cool powers but fundamentally how did the pain whichever one of them it is get from Jiraiya leaving to kind of being this way, kind of almost leader of the Akatsuki. And it's very, very interesting kind of the explanation that we get here, you know. His goal is to cre create peace and bring about justice, which is exactly what Naruto is trying to do. And we get the, the kind of typical hero-villain dynamic here in that Naruto says, sure, yeah, right, like, you're, you, you've killed all these people, you've done all this stuff, you destroyed the village, and you're trying to say that you're trying to create peace. Um, and Naruto kind of counters it by like saying, my goal is to bring you down and bring peace to the shinobi world. Which is... It, it leads into the whole idea of Pain just kind of countering Naruto with basically that, like, what makes your goal more just than mine? I also have suffered pain at the hands of other people. In my case, the Leaf Village. They killed my parents. And... Um, the wars that were created by the bigger villages led to my smaller villages suffering greatly during the war. And I felt all of this pain, and I feel just, in terms of taking my revenge against the Leaf Village, just like you feel you will gain your justice by killing me. And um, so are we really kind of that different? And it's, it's fascinating to see a villain, like, really challenge Naruto, not just physically in this fight, but also really kind of test his ideals. And this is the first time this has really kind of come into play. With Naruto, it's always been a case of, like, his, his kind of... Will his physicality, his techniques match up to against the villains? And, like, he's always kind of able to, to some extent, maybe talk his way out of a fight, into a fight, or whatever. But here, he is truly being challenged by what a villain is kind of saying to him. That, like, do you, like, know what you want to do? Um... Uh, and like he kind of just explains it here, you know, you and I are the same, both motivated by justice. The justice I delivered against Konoha is no different than what you are trying to do to me. So just what I was trying to say there. Um, everyone feels the same pain when losing what is precious. You and I have both experienced that pain. You strive for your justice and I for mine. Ordinary men driven to vengeance in the name of justice. And if one calls vengeance justice, such justice will just breed further vengeance, and a vicious cycle of hatred will be set into motion. Kind of saying to Naruto that, like, you are trying to end the cycle of hatred, but in doing what you are doing right now, trying to kill me, you are contributing to the cycle of hatred because this is exactly what everyone is doing. 
Um, and I suppose the example you can instantly bring in is like, what exactly is Sasuke doing? He was trying to kill Itachi out of revenge for what he did to the clan. Now he's trying to take out the Leaf Village for what they did to Itachi. And it's all about like, this is the first time Naruto is potentially going down a path similar to that and how is he going to get out of it. Um, Pain continues, right now I live in that cycle, I know the past and can foretell our future, so same as our history. I do not see people as anything other than petty creatures that will never be able to understand each other. The shinobi world is ruled by hatred. So you can see kind of what he's about here in that he doesn't think humanity, humans, ninjas, can ever truly understand each other in the sense of like the way Jiraiya wanted it. His hope, Jiraiya's big hope has always been that he hoped that one day the people could like truly understand each other and that would bring lasting peace. Pain doesn't believe that. Instead he believes that the only way to in any way make people think similarly to bring peace is basically by making everyone experience fear and pain and that will bring them together out of their combined shared pain to not want to ever experience that again. It's the it's the kind of nuclear option that the Akatsuki is going for here, that they will have the tail beasts, they'll use them as basically weapons, give them to certain nations, give them to other different nations, and basically it's the whole idea of, you know, everyone has such powers that if someone attacks, everyone will attack and the world will be destroyed. There'll be so much destruction that there'll be nothing left in the end for whoever wins the, the battle. So it's that whole nuclear kind of Armageddon type situation here, just in ninja terms with chakra monsters and so on, what Naruto is dealing with. Um, it's it's really kind of like fascinating to kind of get this explanation because you know the, the, I'll get into like exactly how he says it, but before he goes into his explanation, he says he basically asks Naruto the question, "Okay, you're trying to do what Jiraiya is kind of like asking you to do. So am I." And he basically just says, how would you confront this hatred in order to create peace? Tell me. Explain to me your plan. And Naruto here just kind of says, don't know, I hadn't thought that far. And it's this really big moment where, like, you as the, the viewer are just kind of like, he's kind of, he's completely right in this situation in that, like, Naruto has always just gone on the ideal of, you know, like, I'll do it because I'll try hard enough. But does he actually have a plan to bring peace to the world like Jiraiya wants? does he really and it seems like at this point in time he doesn't and his explanation is basically that um, you know I'm going to use the power of the nine biju to create a biju weapon that is many times more stronger than that which flattened this village power strong enough to erase an, to erase an entire nation in an instant I'm going to show this world true pain stop all wars with the terror the pain will inspire and lead it into peace and stability and um, uh, that is the only way the peace can be achieved after after several decades, that pain too will eventually fade with time. It uh, its effectiveness will diminish, and humanity will begin to war once more. This time, they themselves will use the Biju weapons against one another and reconfirm what true pain is. And then peace will be restored again for a time. To create these short periods of peace through pain uh, that interrupts the end of the cycle of hatred, that is my dream. So he's kind of got this whole idea in his head that there will never be lasting peace in the ninja world. The only hope is that there will be moments of peace that will be better than just constant warring, and they'll create that by using weapons and how they approach doing that. The Akatsuki will use one giant weapon to create an era of peace. They'll spread the weapons out. That will create another era of peace, but there'll be destruction in the kind of meantime as well. Um, as we get the full reveal of Nagato for the first time here, that Nagato is the one behind all of this, uh, he is the kind of actual pain transmitting it, and you can see here that he's kind of completely like skin and bones basically, that he is putting everything of himself into controlling the bodies of pain, um, and Conan is kind of just there to support him, and you can see how much she cares for him, and that she doesn't want him pushing himself to his limit like he actually is. It's uh, very kind of powerfully done, um, but uh, yeah, the, and Naruto kind of tries to argue back, you know, but like Pain just kind of counters, you know, you're full of hot air, you can't even answer my question. Your only other option is to kind of um, give me the Nine Tails power. Um, but yeah, this is the point at which uh, Hinata enters the battle to try and save Naruto, 
And uh, I will say with this moment is that I, I think the anime did a little bit better in that I liked that the anime had Hinata fight for a little bit longer than we get here. Here she kind of jumps in, says, says you know, I, I won't let you hurt Naruto. She gives a little bit of her kind of speech, um, you know, I'm just being selfish, you know, I want, I'm here because I want to be. I used to be such a crybaby, always giving up before even starting. I took the wrong path so many times, but you... You helped me uh, find my way and take the correct path, Naruto. I always chased after you, wanting to catch you, wanting to walk together with you forever. I want to be at your side always. You changed me, Naruto. Your smiling face saved me, and that's why I'm not afraid to die defending you. Um, because I love you. And we get the really, really nice image there of Hinata on that panel saying it um, as she goes to fight for Naruto. She uses her best technique that we've seen up to now um, Yuho Shoshiken uh, gentle step twin lion fists uh, but instantly he counters it with the almighty push and then off kind of panel we get the idea that he kind of kind of slashes her with the, one of the kind of chakra receiver rod things that he has and um, basically as far as Naruto is confirmed Hinata has just been killed right in front of him and just I like that there is absolutely no build towards it. It's just this happens. Naruto's expression. Um, it's just like the attack happens. You just get the sound effect. Naruto's expression. Next page. It's activated. No like multiple panels of this kind of uh, power emanating and then coming out. It's just instantaneous. That Nar that Hinata's confession there and him kind of to some extent I suppose realizing how he feels about her. Uh, caring about her and her just being cut down in front of him like that is so powerful that it just instantly triggers like six tails um, on his nine tails mode and Payne just kind of counters this with do you still think people can ever truly understand each other as you wish you know you, but in the end you will find that my pain is still greater than yours basically saying that like oh you think that the pain of losing this girl is as much as my pain and that you can now beat me but no, you'll find out that mine is still far greater than yours. Um, but um, yeah, the the fight kind of continues, and the the idea here in this fight is just that Naruto, in this kind of crazed uh, Nine Tails mode, can actually break through the Almighty Push. That it's not enough to push uh, this tail beast back; that he kind of breaks through it, and basically forces Pain to actually retreat. And so they kind of head away from the village at this point in time. Uh, as we get reactions from like Sakura, um, Yamato, and so on, to the fact that this uh, Naruto has gone six tails and the seal has kind of been broken, it's uh, there's very low chance of anything kind of coming back from this. Um, the only attack that Pain has to kind of contain Naruto in this mode is catastrophic planetary devastation, and because Pain is now closer to the receiver, to the tr the transmitter of Nagato. Um, he can actually use this technique and so it's really impressive as he basically captures um, the Naruto in the Nine Tails mode in this giant ball effectively making a kind of moon like object and um, contains it and an uh, interesting kind of point here as we get um, Conan reacting you know it's so big you know like basically saying like you're putting so much effort into this um, but he just says compared to what the Sage of the Six Paths created this is nothing um, so kind of establishing that this is a technique that Sage of Six Path has used, uh, which is a reference to ultimately uh, Kaguya and how, what she was sealed in, that the moon was created by this technique basically, so very, very interesting stuff, um, at least I think that's it. Um, but yeah, th then we get kind of Naruto's inner kind of monologue, as basic, inner, inner world as he's kind of reacting to this, like what is actually happening inside Naruto now that basically the t nine tailed fox is kind of completely taken over and it's basically saying you know like uh, destroy everything anything that causes you pain give me your soul and i will rescue you from your pain the seal looks like it's about to com kind of completely snap that he's kind of giving in to completely into this kind of pain and hatred the we see that like it's so powerful that even the nine tails is beginning to kind of break out of the planetary devastation technique and Naruto is so close to basically ripping the seal off on completely on the nine tails as he's stopped by the arrival of Minato. Very, very great reveal there that it it 
it kind of is unexpected. Like, there's very little build-up to this happening. It's just, he's about to take the seal off, off, a hand grabs him, and it's, it's Minato. And, like, one of the first things he says is, I was looking forward to meeting my son as a young man, so I guess it evens out that I'm here now. And it's really good because initially he's just kind of like, oh, the fourth Hokage, what's he doing in here? And then, he, like, even after Minato says, you know, you're my son a bunch of times, it takes, like, a, the fourth or fifth time for him saying it to, you actually get Naruto's reaction, and it's really kind of powerful now that he finally knows who his father was, that we've known for so long this reveal, but Naruto hasn't. And it's interesting that, like, it's initially really happy for him, but then he re instantly realizes that, like, oh, the fourth Hokage, uh, he knows, of, he obviously knows the story, but, like, some of the story, but like he now realizes that wait, the fourth Okage saved the village, so that means my father did this to me, and he just kind of punches Minato, and the emotion kind of comes out, and that it's not like he violently hates his father, it's just why would you put me through this? Like my life, the way it was, is is the way it was because of what happened, because of the the fox. Why would you do this? And Minato can only apologize, but says that you know. I believe that, you know, you could handle half of the Nine Tails. That's why I put it in you, and that, you know, you you could actually fulfill these goals. And the, one of the key things he says to him is that um, the person who caused the Nine Tails attack all those years ago was um, the one pulling the, pulling the strings behind the scenes, and it was the masked one from the Akatsuki, who is obviously Toby. Uh, Madara, has, as we've recently got revealed, so he was the one who orchestrated that attack all those years ago. So big reveal there. Um, uh, and as Naruto now discovers that kind of pain is sort of being used by him as well, that uh, Madara has control over pain uh, in the Akatsuki because he kind of uses kind of uh, what pain is kind of experienced. Um, but uh, yeah, then we, after this moment, is basically just uh, Minato reconstructs Naruto's seal and he's out of the planetary devastation he activates stage mode again, and it's this big moment where, like, just Minato telling Naruto, I believe in you, gives him the strength to continue fighting, and it's just this uh, whole idea of, you know, like, his doubt is erased that because of this this impactful meeting with his father. Um, as the fight kind of comes down to Tendo Pain versus Naruto's kind of last kind of moment of stage mode. Um, and in stage mode, he kind of figures out that Hinata is still alive, she's getting attention, um, she's in a bad way of course, but she is still alive, his rampage in the Nine Tails mode didn't destroy anything, it destroyed some stuff, but it didn't kill anyone, so he's kind of, he has the relief of knowing that he hasn't done anything like that, um, and then there's a little bit of conversation as the fight actually kind of happens, and it's uh, pretty impactful, uh, I'll, I'll discuss the fight in just a second, one notable thing would be one of the cover pages we get a little moment of uh, Sakura healing uh, Hinata as uh, uh, she notes about Hinata. Hinata, you really love Naruto, don't you? So Sakura is aware of this and it's pretty Im important. But the fight, how it comes to an end, is really well done as just Naruto throws everything at Tendo Pain. Tendo Pain is continuing to use the push and pull stuff, but Naruto uses the Rasen Shuriken as like cover. Then the rubble from that attack turns out to be shadow clones. They're still not enough. And then he uses his shadow clones to throw the actual Naruto in one last moment. And he kind of takes him out with just a standard Rasengan. And that looks to be the end of the fight. Really, really well done, you know. And as he, as he kind of screams, you know, stop trying to make me give up. Um, so really, really nice stuff there. So great volume, volume 47. There's still obviously the aftermath of this to come in terms of explaining everything about this arc um, in terms of Payne's backstory, but that will come, I assume, in the next volume. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to end the video there. Excellent volume, really good stuff, um, and yeah, I'll, I'll at least try and get one more of these out before the end of the year so I can finish up the box set, volume 2 of the manga. But yeah, I'll just say, uh, links in the description to my Twitter and Tumblr if you want to follow me on social media. Also, links in the description to my Patreon campaign and my PayPal donation link also if you want to help support my channel so I can make more videos, better videos. But that has been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.